بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا All perfect praise is due to Allah I testify that none is worthy of worship but Allah the Almighty And I testify that Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم is his final prophet and Messenger. May Allah exalt his mention as well as that of his families and all his companions. In the previous session, we stopped at the different ways of expressing the reason of revelation. Number one is when the companion says the reason for revealing such and such verse or chapter was, and then he states a reason. That's a direct, clear, confirmed reason of revelation. There is no doubt about it. A second type is when the companion says, such and such event took place, and then such and such verse was revealed. Or the Prophet ﷺ was asked about such and such matter, and then such and such verse or chapter was revealed. Now this does not mean, as the scholars said, that this was the only reason for revealing this verse or chapter. It means it is one of the reasons. There could have been other reasons for which the same verse was revealed. Meaning, it is revealed for a certain event, and then a, a similar event took place. Jibreel would come down to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, giving him instructions that the same verse applies this to this one as well and so on and so forth. The third and last method is when the companion says, I believe that this verse was revealed for such and such reason. So there is no certainty in that, in that form of expressing the reason for revelation. Now one thing here you need to bear in mind that the reason for revelation is something that cannot be reported by other than the companions. And it has to be through an authentic chain of narrators to them. It has to be a sound chain for it to become a confirmed piece of information. There are many, many benefits and wisdoms for learning the reasons of revelation. Number one, knowing the reason for revelation helps a person find out what's been abrogated when a certain event takes place and a rule is being abrogated, then he knows that this happened and thus this rule is no longer applicable and a new one came about or people were given permission and so on and so forth. Another reason or wisdom or benefit, <clears throat> it helps a person know the dates of events when they took place. Thirdly, it helps a person find out the, the wisdom of revealing 
a given verse. Fourthly, it helps the person understand the meaning of the verse. And let, let me give an example of how can a person misunderstand the verse and apply it in a wrong way. In the battle of Constantinople, one of the companions from the Muhajireen suddenly shot towards the enemy. He immersed their ranks, their lines, and then came back. Upon his, uh, his approach to the enemy, people started saying, and Abu Ayyub al-Ansari, radiallahu anhu, was present during that battle. So some people started saying, look, this man is throwing himself into destruction. Repeating a verse that is in the Quran, وَلَا تُلْقُوا بِأَيْدِيكُمْ إِلَى التَّهْلُكَ And do not throw yourselves with your own hands into destruction. So they said, they repeated that part of the verse, he is throwing himself with his own hands into destruction. Abu Ayyub al-Ansari, now this is what they understood, right? Now the reason for revelation come to play here. Abu Ayyub al-Ansari said, no people, you misunderstood the meaning of this verse. This verse was revealed about us, the residents of Medina. When Allah Azza wa Jal established the Islamic State and the Muslims became strong and the word of Allah Azza wa Jal became superior, we, the residents of Medina, said to one another, we have fought with Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam until Allah Azza wa Jal made the state strong and made his word superior. So let us go back to our trade and agriculture and work on it because it is destroyed now. And let us give up jihad and spending charity for jihad. And let us take, take care of our own business now. He said, and it was then revealed telling us that what we were thinking of was actually throwing ourselves into destruction and by performing jihad and spending charity for the sake of Allah was the opposite, was saving and rescuing ourselves from destruction. So knowing the reason of revelation helps a person understand the meaning of the verse. Undoubtedly, understanding the reason of revelation helps a person who is attempting to memorize the Qur'an memorize it much faster and easier. Knowing the events, knowing the circumstances, knowing the reason helps you understand and thus memorize the Qur'an much easier and faster. The scholars divide the, Qur the chapters of the Qur'an in two types. A Meccan and a Medinan. The way they classified it was controversial. There are three schools of thought, if you may, with this regard. One consider the chapter Meccan or Medinan with regards to the time it was revealed. Another with regards to those who are addressed with the revelation. The last, the third and last was with regards to the place it was revealed. Now let me explain. Now the predominant opinion is that it is the first opinion. And this is the majority of the scholars. It is with regards to the time it was revealed, regardless where it was revealed. Meaning, it was revealed prior to the migration of Muhammad or after his migration 
anything prior to the migration was a Meccan chapter. Anything that came after the migration was a Medinan chapter. Even if it was revealed in Mecca, like what was revealed on Muhammad wasallam when he conquered Mecca. That was in Mecca. But it's not considered Meccan. It's considered Medinan because it was revealed after the migration of Muhammad wasallam. The second type, we already mentioned that the predominant opinion is that the classification is with regards to the time of revelation prior or after the migration of Muhammad sallallahu With regards to those who are addressed is the second type. They say that Allah Azza wa Jal addressed the people of Mecca because they were non-believers with Ya ayyuhan nas, O people. Whilst He addressed the people of Medina with Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, because they were believers. But that's not consistent in the Quran. There were verses that were revealed in Medina, and Allah Azza wa Jal addressed people with Ya ayyuhal nas. And therefore, it's not a consistent rule that applies to everything in the Quran. That's why the scholar said it's not the soundest opinion. The third and last was with regards to the place of revelation. They said anything revealed in Mecca is Meccan, anything is revealed in Medina is Medinan. Well, the scholars who hold the first opinion as the predominant say, okay, what about verses that were neither in Mecca nor in Medina? What do we classify them as? Something that was revealed to Muhammad sallallahu on a journey, when he was going on a battle, when he was outside Mecca and Medina. Therefore, it's not consistent and the one that remains to be uh, the predominant opinion is the uh, one with regards to the time of revelation prior or after the migration of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Let's mention a few differences uh, with, uh, b between the Meccan and Medinan uh, Quran. And with this, we will conclude, insha'Allah. Uh, Shaykh al-Uthaymeen, rahmatullahi alayhi, said, there are two areas where we notice differences between the Qur'an of Mecca and the Qur'an of Medina. The first difference is in the style the second difference is in the topic addressed. He said, the Meccan verses or the Meccan Quran is, it is noticed when you recite or when you read it, that it, the, the style of it is aggressive. It's strong. Uh, because it is addressing people who were rebellion, who were disbelievers who rejected the message, who were stubborn, who were arrogant. And that's why, the style, that's why the style was aggressive, was strong, powerful words, threats. While, on the other hand, the Medinan Qur'an was soft. Another difference in the style between the Meccan and the, the Medinan Qur'an is that the verses of the Meccan Qur'an are noticeably short verses, while the Medan and Qur'an are long verses, because in many cases it, it, it addressed rulings and explaining rulings and things like that, so they had to be long. So the style differed in two, the, the softness and aggressiveness and the length of the verses. The second difference, as Shaykh Al-Uthaymeen rahmatullahi mentioned, was with regards to the topics. The Meccan Qur'an addressed resurrection, the day of judgment, the oneness of Allah with regards to worship, because it was addressing people who rejected the oneness of Allah with regards to worship, who rejected resurrection, 
who rejected the day of judgment, while uh, on the other hand, the Medinan topics addressed acts of worship, transactions, uh, penal laws, and things of the sort. A second difference within the the uh, the second branch uh, is that the Medinan Quran, in particular, was the only ver the, the only type of the two that addressed jihad and hypocrites, because in Mecca there were no hypocrites, and in Mecca. There was no jihad legislated yet. So the Meccan Quran does not include that, does not address, uh, rather does not address that. It doesn't address any of these two. The situation of the hypocrites and the description of the hypocrites and all that, and rulings regarding jihad and so on and so forth. Uh, I will conclude this with three more points that were uh, added by Sheikh al qattan uh, in his uh, known book uh, of the sciences of the Quran, he said only Meccan Quran included the prostration for recitation. You don't find this in Medinan Quran. Number two, he said the word kalla, nay, is only used in uh, the Meccan Quran. And finally, he said, the verses that address the issue of debating with the people of the book are only found in the Medinan Quran. With this, we, we will conclude this uh, session. Inshallah, in, in the next session, we will start uh, with chapter Amma, and we will start... Uh, explaining chapter and naba which is after which we the, uh, the entire chapter of quran is uh, named uh, we will conclude with this subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi